G'day, my name's Chris. Welcome into my shed and welcome to Flat Tank Journey. This is the Torpedo number seven. I've got 230 people have subscribed to the channel. Hey, if you're a subscriber, thanks a lot. I mean, it's actually really surprising um, that a weirdo in his own shed um, restoring some old bikes can attract 230 people to subscribe so i'm really pleased and slightly flattered and thank you to the people that contribute and and say g'day or offer a good suggestion it, it's super if you like the videos share them or subscribe or just keep watching i don't really mind it's all good thanks for that hey um episode yesterday uh, for Christmas Day and an episode today because I've got a few in the can and I've shot this footage over the last couple of weeks and then I record an intro and an exit so that I know what's happened in the video and it lets me get some stuff done. This is pretty hard doing. This week I had to tackle the wheel nuts um, because Mikey had told me they weren't right. I also tackled, tackled the levers um, on the bike that I really didn't like the ones that I had. So the postman came and it was package day and that's always exciting. I also got stuck into my least favorite job and that was cabling. There's only two cables on the whole bike, but I still hate it. So I got in and did that and, and put on my big boy pants and did it. Also made a pair of hand grips out of wood and leather but I don't really like them, and I just give a brief reference to those. Anyway, enjoy the video. Hope you're having a super time. Cheers. Feels like the first day of summer here, sitting here in the shed. Got the fans on, so there's a bit of background noise. Sorry about that. This is the front end. I've taken the front wheel out. The next job is to fix these wheel nuts. They got no shoulder on the back of them. So the axle goes through and can flog around inside the hole. The axle appears to be 7 sixteenths BSF. I'm not really sure why. Um, funny size. I thought it was going to be metric, but it doesn't measure that way. And so I'm going to have a go at making these nuts. Now, I'm a lucky man. Somebody gave me about 250 kilos of hex bar. Some of it's a little bit rusty and a little bit uh, disheveled looking, but it's all actually new. So I'm going to make a new nut and I'm going to put a 15 and a half mil shoulder, I think it is, on the back of it and only shallow, only the width of the dropout, only this width, so that it goes through and captures the front wheel in that dropout. So the only way to get the wheel out is to take the nut back the nut right out and let the axle slide forward. So even when the nut's loose, it won't actually let the wheel drop out. Or well, that's my interpretation of what that shape, like the keyhole is for. So I'm gonna make some nuts. It ended up being a frustrating little job. I measured the axle wrong. It's not 7 16 BSF. It's actually 12 mil by 1.5. I really frustrated with myself. I only made one nut and, and it was wrong. Here's the other nut. You can see the shoulder on the back of it. The hex bar is actually a little bit of rust in it. Um, the nuts kind of look slightly patinaed. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I can probably hunt through and find better hex bar. They need a bit of a polish up, but they look all right. I'm going to get it back on the bike. These are the spaces for the wheels. I don't know whether I like those. They're a bit loose, but I think they're probably all right. Let me get it back on the bike. They fit in the dropouts really well. They tighten up nice. I might get some um, washers with 16 mil holes. I've got like 1590 or something hole. So I might get some holes, the washers that are 16 mil and just put them on there. I think it'll clean them right up. It certainly um, will stop the wheel flopping around. The axle would have flopped around in that dropout. Uh, and you could tighten it all day long and it'd still move around. It would have been a little bit dangerous, a little bit sketchy to ride. So I appreciate Mikey telling me that, the guy that sold me the bike. He told me that they um, needed new nuts in the front wheels. So I'm going to check the back wheels as well, because I don't remember what he said about that. So the rear wheel was exactly the same. Needed the nuts replaced. Uh, 12 by 1.5 millimetre thread. Made the nuts, 
put a 4.7 something mil shoulder on the back of them. Now they tighten up. Um, they tightened up before, but now the shoulder tightens up in the dropout and the rear wheel can't come out even if the nut loosens. It would have to loosen off a long way to come out. Feel much better about that. It'll certainly sit in the dropout and run truer and there'll be less chance of any problems. Good result. Long fiddly job, but a good result. It's parcel day and new parts day. Here's my decompression lever. I don't really like it. Get ratty. And here is the throttle lever. Again, it's really isn't, yeah, but it's not really right. Would have had something a little more elegant looking. Um, I think that's um, agricultural machinery, lawnmower, something like that. I, I don't know. It doesn't look like motorcycle to me. It doesn't feel quite right. So I hit the old internet and um, bought some parts. So first one, I bought a throttle lever. And I got these in Australia from BMH Trading uh, in Queensland. And I don't know, found them online. Looks all right. Uh, the quality's about right. And this is described as Doherty. Um, made in England. MCA. Um, P314 is the part number. And this is a... I'm going to use this as a throttle lever. It's a uh, right-hand side. So that's throttle side. And it would have been an air choke lever. But I'm going to use it as a throttle lever. Just a bit cleaner, less agricultural, and a little bit better. But I'll show you what I'm putting on the bike. Seven, eight spars. So hopefully that all blocks up okay. Uh, this one's still in pack. Let's see if the package breaks easily. Not really. Good English quality plastic, perhaps. No, made in Taiwan, it says. Uh, this is the right-hand side decompression lever, ball end. Weirdly. On the package, it says the 3rd of September, 2020, uh, RGM Norton Limited, approved parts. Decompression lever for 7 8 spars. It's a bit bigger than I was hoping. There it is compared to the to the old one. Um, it's, it's pretty big. Uh, it's a two-finger job, and the ball on the end of it is massive. Big balls. Looks more the part though. Should be slightly easier to operate and should look okay on the bars. Certainly they're both chrome plated and yes, I know they should be nickel. Um, but they're not. And I'm loath to disassemble them and get them nickel plated. I have done that before. But anyway, I'm going to put these on the bike. And I've also made some hand grips. I don't really like them. Um, they're not as nice as the first set I made. But anyway, I can always make another set. Let's have a look at all of that on the bike. Here's the bars and the levers and the grips. I don't hate the grips as much when I see them on the bike, but I still don't like them. So let's do the bad bit first. So these are the grips. They're made out of a timber called Budgeroo that I got locally and they're all right. The first ones I made, I wrapped a leather cord and it wrapped really tight and really even. These ones, I wrapped a leather thong or a leather strap. Just didn't wrap as even as I'd like. I might be overthinking it, but not quite as nice. They look all right, though, and they look the part. There's the decompression lever, and I've just... It tightens up really well on the bars, and they look good. Um, it's right where it is. Be comfortable for your hand to pull, because don't forget, this is a direct drive. So you've got two wooden blocks to ram into the back wheel and a decompression lever, and that's about all you got. We'll scoot around and we'll have a look at the other side. Well, this is the action side, and again, not really big on the grip. Doesn't quite do it for me. Um, it might settle down. They certainly look better on the bike than what I thought they were gonna. Here's the throttle lever. I've left it near my thumb. A um, little mark on the bars there. Might even need to go further up the bar. But kind of actuates really smoothly and kind of looks the part. 
I think it looks better than it did before. So I'm really happy with the bars, um, pretty much. The bars are sitting a bit high um, because the guy that sold me the bike had the headset um, re-stemmed, re-tubed, and it's a bit long. I think it probably needs to be a bit shorter, but I'm gonna wait until the seat comes back and I get the footrests on and the tank back on and then get a vibe. I feel like it needs 50 mil cut off it, but I'm gonna call the levers a win and the grips, well, I'm gonna call them a 75% win. So I've been working on the bars um, on and off. I'm still not convinced about the grips, but you know, they kind of look good and they're nice in your hand. The throttle lever. Now cabling is the one of the jobs I hate the most. I really grapple with it. I've got this cable about right and the tension is about right. Certainly operates the throttle. And I imagine it'll give a little. Um, it's got an adjuster and I have got the adjuster wound out a fair bit because I've made it slightly long. Not the end of the world, um, but everything works really smoothly and the spring's in there and it's all good. I'm gonna get to work on the decompression lever and a short cable for that. I'll bring you back and show you how I get on, but I hate cabling. So here's one of my blank cables. I'm sure you can buy these in Australia, but I found them online in the UK when I was buying the Villiers parts. And um, I just bought them from there. When they come, and you can see I've drawn a bit of blood this morning. Sorry about that. Um, they come with an end soldered in. Then they come with these three different ends for you to solder on. It's actually fantastic because the one you don't, ones you don't use, you throw in a drawer. And it's ideal for when you drop one like I did yesterday. And when you're a wood turner and you've got a shed with sawdust all over the floor, a small brass fitting is really easy to lose. And so it disappeared, but I had a drawer full and I got another one out, so it's good. So I'm gonna start measuring this up for the decompression lever and see what sort of end I need. And then I'm gonna try and get on with it. Okay, so after all my moaning, the decompression lever wasn't quite difficult. The end that was already sold on the cable fits in to the lever, and the lever actuates really well. But then, I always reckon these things are weird. Um, the cable outer fits up against here, and it's the only way you can get it to pull in. But it sort of doesn't feel right. It feels like the cable should come in from this side, and you should solder an end to it. And it's just, the cable pushes through, and it's quite a challenge to get it through, and you tighten it up with that bolt. Weird. Um, if anybody has got a better solution or thinks I'm wrong, um, just let me know, will you? And send me a picture or a video or something. Anyway, decompression lever works, and the cables are nicely routed, and I've left them slightly long, because I like a generous cabling and I like them to cross over at the front and be about equidistant in their height. And I'll probably tuck a little cable tie on them um, so that they look really neat and really clean. Anyway, another job done. Well, that's flat tank journey for another week. That's my torpedo. It's going really well. I've been rummaging looking for parts for a 27 BSA for a guy who contacted me. Um, and that's gone really well. I've sent him some stuff out of an oil pump and we were talking about springs and I've got boxes full of shit. Not a lot of stuff left over from my visa project, but a little bit, things like oil pump springs. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Um, a lot of work going on and there's a lot coming up in quick succession. Um, the videos are getting a bit disjointed because I'm doing lots of little jobs at a time. I hope to start winding things up into a bit of a frenzy. And I've got some exciting stuff for the coming weeks. It's pretty cool. Uh, hope you're having a great Christmas break. Cheers. Catch up with you soon.